So our next presenter is Eric Richardson. Um, Eric is the current Vice President of uh, Programming and Production at DCTV. Prior to DCTV, Eric served as Executive Director of the District of Columbia Office of Cable Tele Television for over eight years. During his time as the Director of Broadcast Service at Howard University, PBS affiliate, affiliate WHUT-TV, he was instrumental in enhancing WHUT's programming and fundraising vision. Mr. Richardson has served as executive producer for Evening Exchange with Kojo Namdi, contributed to the development of and direction of shows like The Tavis Smalley Show, Money Wise with Kelvin Boston, and White House Chronicles. He has produced content for NBC, BET, Washington Performing Arts Society, and various other media outlets. Please welcome Eric Richardson, who will discuss how you can submit your program to PBS stations and broadcast digital uh, um, across the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When he said Mr. Richardson, I thought my father was going to pop out somewhere. I am simply Eric, and it is my pleasure to be here with you today. How many of you know that content is king? We're all content creators, right? So content is definitely king. And content is king because of so many different things. Technology. Someone is recording this right now and creating content. That is important. That content has to land somewhere. Content is also king because how many of you have cable? That's about 900 channels on one cable system. Those channels have to be programmed. So today I'll talk to you a little bit from different perspectives as a programmer and as a content creator. Uh, as it was mentioned in the introduction, I was the program director for WHUT for a number of years. And during that time, I saw all types of programs. Uh, one of the things that I got a chance to do with the Tavis Smiley Show. Tavis Smiley had this great show, and uh, it was funded, but he couldn't get it on the air in a lot of major markets. So WETA, which is in our market, did not put it on. Maryland Public Television did not put it on. The first station in this area to air Tavis's show was WHUT and I put it on the air. As a result of that, it got ratings, people tuned in, then WETA and Maryland Public Television and everyone else started to put that on the air. Also another show I've worked on and worked with is White House Chronicles. They have a very unique story because at White House Chronicles, they are on a number of PBS stations across the country, and they're on probably as many public education and government channels as well. So they use the resources. One in particular that they do use is PEG Media uh, that we heard about earlier. So there are ways to get your content on the air. How many of you are familiar with the Knight Foundation? So the Knight Foundation, they do a lot of great work with media, journalism, research. They even fund some uh, uh, grants and programs. And of course, this was done in 2018, just last year. They talked about the local TV news and the new media landscape. The headline here says the Knight Foundation report says that local TV news is thriving but needs to innovate to remain relevant. That is very important because local news stations do not have the opportunity to be local because the local news channels, the local news stations tend to cover things. Um, I didn't watch the news at six because I was on the way here, but I guarantee you channel four, five, seven or nine, there's a story about a fire there's a story about crime, so they don't have the local effect. So, 2018, like I said, last year, the study and report found that while local TV station news broadcasts continue to be dominant for sources for news, the audience has changed. As a result of that change, you see that with 
the content. You see that with, as I mentioned, the news. That was again last year. In 2010, I realized that this same thing was happening. So in 2010, I was the executive director of the DC Office of Cable Television. A few years before that, I'd walked into the Office of Cable Television and worked on a project with the city. I was still working at WHUT. And during that time, we did a collaboration with Howard University and the city to produce some content when Mayor Williams was in office because he had a community engagement piece that was very beneficial to both parties. We produced the program. I saw their facility. It was wonderful. I go back to Howard. I got a call from Mayor Williams and it said, hey, I want you to come and work at the government channel. We have this great government channel. I know, I was there, I saw it. But I work at WHUT, it's a broadcast channel and I can't, I just can't go and work for the government channel. But I went to go and work for the government channel. And it was the best experience of my life because it started the process of being in a space similar to this space where there's broadcast quality equipment where you can produce content. I saw all of this content and I said, you know, maybe we need to stop doing ribbon cuttings and the mayor kissing babies and that. This, we can still do that, but let's do some other things as well. And everyone at the government channel said, we can't do other stuff, we're the government channel. I said, we have great equipment. We should do a story about the city, a show about the city. They said, no, we can't do that because we're the government channel. I said, you know, we could win an Emmy one day. They said, we can't do that because they were the what? Government, government, channel. government channel. Well, again, 2010 comes around and I see that NBC4 has additional channels. They have these HD channels. As I turn on the HD channels, because I have 900 channels on my cable system, I notice that they're airing things like the NOAA weather radar. Channel 7 is doing the same thing. So again, they need content and they cannot tell the local stories in ways that they used to tell local stories. So by way of a relationship with a friend I worked with at BET on some projects, I said, we're doing this show at the government channel and it's great, it's all about DC and it'll be a local show that people will love. It so happened that her husband was the general manager of NBC4. She loved the show. She told him about the show. I gave her the show. She gave the show to him. I'm pretty sure he thought the government channel. Yeah, I got to see this show. <laughs> and that's what it, basically what happened. So for about two months, I sat by the phone. Phone didn't ring. I was in my office one night at about seven o'clock and my phone rings and it's Michael Jack. And I say, why is Michael Jack calling me at 730 in the evening? Michael Jack says, Eric, this show is amazing and we have to get it on the air. We have to air this show on NBC4. So that's what this press release talks about. OCT's Washington Full Circle to air on NBC4 television. Washington Full Circle, an original production of the District of Columbia's Office of Cable Television, will broadcast Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. on NBC4 Washington beginning April 10th. You saw that path? The same thing can happen with your content. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I'll show you again. Local channels cannot tell local stories the way they used to. The show that we aired on NBC4 was Washington Full Circle. Here is a bit of that show. Here we go. Washington Full Circle is about to begin. Okay, I only have 20 seconds, so let me make it quick. Uh, we want to know what you're thinking. Go to Facebook, become a fan of Washington Full Circle, and leave your comments. Hurry, the show's about to begin. Okay, Washington Full Circle's up next. Get in the circle. Coming up, Washington Full Circle goes to work in search of some of the city's most interesting jobs and places to work. Like inside the Cowgirl Creamery, which houses a whole wide world of cheese in the middle of downtown DC. 
And it takes nerves of steel not to get a little rattled when your job is to charm one of these creatures. Also, what a life. Some grown-ups still get to spend time with their choo-choo trains as part of their job. And his job is to manage a team with some of the biggest names in tennis. The work doesn't get any better than this. Plus, it's got to be one of the sweetest jobs around when your team's kick is heard around the world. It's off to work this week as we clock into some of DC's most interesting jobs and places to work, next on Washington Full Circle. So, as you can see, the show took a different look, a different perspective at things that related to work. The news outlets can't tell that story the same way they can't tell the stories that you are telling with your content. So, as I started to prepare for this project, I talked to several current and former programmers at PBS stations across the country. As a matter of fact, this is a quote from one of them. Uh, Donald Tom says, who was the head of uh, programming for PBS, when I see something pitched to us that clearly doesn't fit, I had to ask, have you ever watched PBS? A lot of people are pitching things that don't relate to what they are airing at PBS. So in this process, I say know your audience. A show that started here is actually airing on a PBS station in our area. This show airs on PBS stations, uh, of course in DC, but it has the potential to air on other stations for a number of reasons, because Howard University Television would love to do a show like this. However, they don't have the resources to do it. However, they don't have the time and energy to do it. But notice how on their website, the featured local series here, this show pops up. Again, local content cannot be produced the same way. When you look at WETA and Maryland Public Television, you have the same situation. WETA, WHUT, Maryland Public Television, they also have digital channels where this content can land. Artico is not a show produced at the WHUT facility. This show, The Rock Newman Show is. Uh, for those of you who know Rock Newman, he has the capability to do that type of show for a number of reasons. Uh, and then the other two shows are shows that are collaborated uh, with producers and so many other people. Another good thing about being in this market is because we are in a large metropolitan area where we have kind of a cross population of outlets when it comes to broadcasts. WHUT is known as a PDP station, which is a smaller PBS station. And what happens because there are channels, uh, again, WETA, Maryland Public Television, as well as WHUT in our market. PBS has come up with a way to make sure that you don't turn on your TV and see something on all three channels at the same time. So you might notice you'll see something on WETA in the evening and it's on uh, Maryland Public Television at the same time. But when you turn to Howard Station, it's not there because they are a PDP station. Again, giving them the advantage and the opportunity to air shows uh, that are local and different from the, system, the national system. PDP stations are found in Washington, D.C., New York, California, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And great opportunities again. Two shows that I mentioned earlier, one of them is appearing here again, White House Chronicle. That show airs on PDP stations across the country. And of course, we all know Democracy Now. Democracy Now is on a number of PBS stations as well as public education and government channels. So I have 10 helpful pieces to help you with your content landing in another place. The first two things here, your show should be solely owned by you. It should be your creation. It should be your thought. 
The second thing here is making sure that you can obtain the rights for the show. Similar to what we talked about in the previous panel uh, discussions here, the content does not just air on TV. It's online because it's streaming. So you have to make sure that the music is cleared for television, for off air, for PBS stations, sometimes educational rights, online rights, and program promotions as well. There's a resource tool that I will supply to you all via email that will give you some ideas of how you can find places to help you support clearing music and uh, doing some of those things. Uh, I'm not partial to one company in particular, but I'll give you three that are great. One is a free service, one is a moderate mid-range service, and the other one is probably um, a great idea for a group of people or maybe even this organization to follow up with as far as uh, getting license uh, agreements with. So, of course, with PBS, there are rules. The quality of the shows are very important. Uh, but when we think about the shows, the show length, we all do our wonderful shows and there are parameters around the shows. I work at DCTV and when I first started working at DCTV, I remember people bringing in a show and the show would be 32 minutes long. 32 minutes will not work. <laughs> A half hour PBS show is 26 minutes and 46 seconds. So you have to kind of live in those parameters. A hour long show will be 56 minutes and 46 seconds. So goodbye, 32 minutes. And of course, a number of things that some of the programmers talked to me about, they will make a decision on airing a show based upon the number of episodes you have. If you have a series and it's there are 32 shows, that's the best thing a programmer would love to hear, that you have a number of shows that they can place in the schedule for a period of time. Another thing to consider is being able to come up with your own funding, underwriting, sponsorship, development, in-kind services are all okay in these shows, as long as you don't have a call to action, no endorsements, no telling people to call now, that type of thing. Another thing, and as we've all talked about, this can get to be expensive. You have to be prepared for the unknown. If your show is going to air on a PBS station, it's going to have to be closed captioned. The same thing, I'll give you three resources where there are kind of an inexpensive route to take for captioning, a, ma, ma, I'm sorry, a middle and a moderate range, and then uh, another system that's a little bit more expensive. But the good thing about the captioning is that it gets you the transcript of the show, uh, and then it also leads to the possibility of some auxiliary enterprise pieces uh, with the show by way of product because you can have this closed caption show that you can sell DVDs and do some other things. Uh, one thing that also came up in this area of being prepared for the unknown, some of the programmers want to know your plan. What is your business plan for the show? If the show has the ability to go on the road, uh, Antiques Roadshow was a show that they did in one place. Now Antiques Roadshow is on the road. Maryland Public Television also does a local version of something similar to Antiques Roadshow. So seeing a business plan will help them kind of determine what, uh, ha what potential is in store for the show. Another thing that they mention is that you have to kind of showcase your success. Sometimes special recognition, awards, Notable guest, that's one thing I will say about uh, Mimi's show. She's had some very notable guests on the show. Living here in D.C., you're bound to be able to get a politician in front of a camera to talk about something. That helps uh, in your show. And, of course, any unique affiliations, which we'll talk about a little bit later. 
You heard it earlier. There are the opportunities for you to create a show and get someone to distribute it for you. Same thing with PBS. PBS can distribute your show. There are other sources, American Public Television, also National Education Telecommunications Association, which is NETA. They do the same thing. And then there are a number of independent distributors who will do that. On the resource sheet, you will also have three individuals that are good resources for that. You heard me talk about associations, uh, affiliations, those type of things. Some programmers will put your show on the air if you are associated with, say, a fraternity, sorority, uh, civic group. They want to know that you have a built-in audience so that if you say, I have this show, it's going to be on the air, that they will tune in. So that is another important factor. Also, when it comes to kind of the audience, social media. How many of you have social media pages with your shows? Those of you who do not, get a page. Have people follow you. Uh, from John's presentation, I want to go get my YouTube page started all over again for a number of reasons. And even looking at that audience translating into people going from online to the television. So using Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even LinkedIn is a wonderful source, Snapchat, and of course, as mentioned, YouTube. The big piece here is being able to deliver on a regular basis, being able to produce the show, making sure that it's centered around local issues, that there's some human interest in it, the clip that I showed you at Washington Full Circle, some people might say that it is promotion. It's not promotion. It's showcasing. It's showcasing a great city with people who have unique jobs and unique experiences. Uh, we had a chance to follow someone on Amtrak, um, also someone at the National Zoo. So again, thinking outside of the box, coming up with something that has human interest is very, very important. And of course, make sure that it is mission driven. Similar situations. You can't take your pop show to the gospel radio station. So you can't take a show that does not fit the particular audience to the area. But I cannot stress it enough that local programming cannot be done the way it used to be. Uh, a lot of the local stations don't do public affairs shows. I'm pretty sure if you walk into a, a public affairs uh, discussion with a local channel and you can deliver a show, most of the time they'll give you a chance uh, to participate in some shape, form, or fashion. And I'll give you a resource on that as well. But overall, and in the end, you guys have an amazing uh, facility here where you are able to produce content on the radio, on TV, the internet, and a number of different places. Content is king. You guys play a major part in that by way of creating the content and getting the content in another place. So thank you for your time. And that's all, folks. <laughs>